So the moment is here. I'm in Continental picking up my airplane with new engines on them. But new engines mean different procedures. So how do you break them in? I don't really know. But today, we're gonna find out. Do not adjust your screens. I am sitting in the right seat of my own airplane. I am here with Chuck Cook from Continental Motors. Traffic, Cherokee, uh, most of you will probably know him one. from uh, okay. B Triple P. Uh, he is a B Triple P guru when it comes to Beechcraft and Barons, P Barons, and and a whole slew of airplanes. He is the guru. He is the man. So um, we are blessed today to be able to fly with him. To, good to be here to learn about the engine braking period so thank you thank you for uh for coming coming along and uh, doing this video with me and uh teaching me and and my followers Can how I to break in an engine well it's good to be one. here and it's always good to get uh, uh information out on the uh in in the pilot population as to the continental's recommended way now there are many things i've seen on the forums um uh, some of them are, are accurate, and some of them are less than accurate. <laughs> and, but we're going to go over the things today about uh, Continental and how we recommend. Now, with this particular ride we're doing today, we've already put uh, about two and a half hours on the airplane doing the initial post-maintenance evaluation flights and the uh, initial break-in. If the break-in's done right, usually within the first two hours, you can do about 80% of the break-in for the airplane. Fairhope Sunny Callahan, Baron 3175 Whiskey, departing runway 1, Fairhope. I run the RPM up to about 2,000 uh, RPM, and then release, and then go from there, because I want to make sure I'm making good even power on both engines before I go. Then we go. During the first part of the break-in, what I'll do is I climb up to 4,000 feet right here close to the airport, and I leave it at wide open throttle all the way up to my 4,000 feet. There's several reasons for doing that. I'm wanting to make it sure that I've got the proper amount of fuel flow because that is super critical. If I can keep the airplane cool, all the way up. See, it's already, it went up to 400. It's on the way back down. It's a hot day. We've got 407 on that number six. But if, I've, if we've got it right, by the time I get to around 3,000 feet, that should start going back down. Right now, we're getting close to there. We're 2,000. It went up to 407. See, it's already started back down. Yep. So I'm happy with that. It's going to start uh, as you break in the engine, get a little bit more time on them. They'll cool down a little bit more. You know, when we took off, it was about 90 degrees here, uh, sea level day. So now I'm coming back down on the temperatures. The temperatures that most people worry about with that is not uh, the 400, 410, 420. They're not limitations that Continental had said. That's by uh, others that have uh, you know, made that determination. But generally, on the first flight, you're going to see, first few flights, you're going to see higher temperatures than you would on 
uh, any other time after that the airplane sufficiently broken in. During the break-in, the initial break-in, we were running it for the first hour with the cow flaps open, the mixtures done by the lean fine to the 100 degrees ridge of peak from the first cylinder that reached peak. And one hour, and we don't change, we don't uh, stay relatively close to the airport. We leave the power uh, set <laughs> and don't change the power at all. It's just an hour at 75%. The cylinders in these are through hard. In the older cylinders, within the first two hours, we could just about get the whole thing broke in. With these, it's not so much. We have to uh, fly these. Generally, it's going to be eight, probably to twelve hours before the break-in's done. The break-in is considered complete when the oil consumption is stabilized. That's not really a definite answer. You know, I can't tell somebody ten hours uh, or eight hours or six hours or whatever if the oil consumption stabilizes. You've quit adding oil. Your your break-in's done. Now, when you say quit adding oil, obviously, if you go down a court, you don't add the court. You you let it drop a little bit to, to see That's correct. if it's going to settle. That's correct. Most of these will settle right around two quarts lower than whatever the maximum is. And that goes for almost all of the Continental engines, whether it's a 12-quart sump, a 10-quart sump, or some of the 8-quart sumps that we have on some of the Cirruses. Then, in the second hour of the break-in, we take it and we run it in alternating 15 minute sequences. So I come up and you can see I started your, your clock here and, and I set the timer and I'll run it 15 minutes at the 75% power setting. Then also from your uh, pilot's operating handbook, 24 inches manifold pressure and 2300 on the RPM was what it had for the uh, 4,000 feet at 65% power So what you want to do as you fly back down to Florida to your home base is continue using 75% flight and altitude where you can go 75%. Right, so for me that basically means I need to stay kind of low at 4,000 feet. Yeah. Well, you can go up, you can, if you run it to 55, you'll, you'll be able to get 75%. Um, probably right around now, you know, you'll have to run it at 24 and a half, maybe 25 inches manifold pressure, just a little bit more, but that'll be close enough for you. And then, um, alternate in 30 minute sequences between 75 and 65 percent power set. Going around, we're going around to the right. So you just and I'll continue one, to alternate the 30 minute sequences until break-in's complete. That's correct. And, uh, you know, when, when we've done it that way, we haven't had any trouble with seating the rings. Generally, the, when people start uh, having issues with uh, oil consumption, it's after oh, yeah, that they have yeah, baby did uh, the, the initial part, the initial uh, uh, break-in period, and you cannot do that. I mean, you've got to really be, you've got to run them hard. You were asking before we got into the airplane about descents. I've got it trimmed here. It's, we're pretty good, trimmed for straight and level. I'm kind of happy with this. It's right in there. I was going just slightly up, now slightly down. Just and, and this is we're 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 good. If I reduce the manifold pressure by five inches manifold pressure, I believe in the props where they are. Right now, the, our mixture can stay where it is. I just reduced it five inches manifold pressure, and if I just let the nose drop on its own. I'll end up with close to 500 feet a minute. Five inches, 500. So if I'm gonna target a descent, I can just come back to here 
leave it, and then as I continue to descend, I'm just going to leave it at the 20 inches manifold pressure. So if I'm coming down four inches, I'm making slight adjustments to it. I'm looking to see if I have right close to the 1,350 degrees. If not, you know, I'm, I'm a little bit rich on the left side, a little bit uh, rich on the right side too. So I'm gonna, I, I could lean it just a little bit more. And, but I don't have to be just, I, I'm not looking, you know, back during the get days when we were flying needles and green arcs, I would have, I would have just been happy. You know, see, I've got my 500 feet per minute about, I'm going to level off at 4,500 feet, and I'm going to leave it here at our 20 yeah, inches uh, manifold pressure. My fuel flows come down because the manifold pressure is down. I'm still 1,300. I'm happy with that. I'm, I'm, I'm close enough that I don't, you know, I'm not going to argue over 50 degrees. When you're, when you're, I, if you stuck your tongue to the 1,300 degree, uh, frying pan or 1350, you're not going to be able to tell much difference. Tower Baron 3175, Whiskey on the visual parade. Baron 3175, Whiskey, Pensacola, Town, runway 8, clear to land, wind 020 at 8. Runway 8, clear to land, suppose. 500. 500, 3 green, clear to land. Well, I want to thank you for taking us through this this whole process of engine braking. There's a lot of information there, uh, a lot of stuff I didn't know, and, and hopefully uh, some information that uh, my viewers find useful. So uh, I really do appreciate it. Thank you very much for that. You're welcome. And for those of you who, who like this video, give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. Uh, if you want to check out uh, Chuck, if you're part of uh, B Triple P, you yes. can. Uh, yes. The best way to check them down B is through that, through, yes. uh, through B, Triple P. Uh, you don't have social media. Or... <laughs> uh, no social media, sorry guys. But uh, B, Triple P, and he is a wealth of knowledge. Also, on you're on Beach Talk as well. I'm on Beach Talk regularly. Or you get the whole company three times. There you go. So, um, he's definitely a wealth of knowledge. And if you have a beach craft of any sort, a Bonanza or a Baron, uh, he is the man to uh, to talk to and check out. So, again, thank you so much for for coming out. <laughs> we'll let your turbochargers cool down here just a minute. <laughs>